Hello? Who's calling? You're a co-pilot studio agent? And who are you looking for? A co-pilot studio agent? You mean agents can call agents? That's, that's super confusing. Why, why do you want to do that? How does it even work? All right, let me transfer you. Hey, if this is one of those questions that you have, this whole concept of how agents call other agents, right? So child agents or even other parent agents, then this is your video. We're going to walk through how it works, why it works, and we're going to build one from scratch. And then we're going to get into, I'll show you one of my more complicated autonomous agents and how agent to agent calling can be used in that to make things better. Sound fun? Then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create an agent that calls an agent. And so I thought we should just start at the beginning so you didn't think there was any shenanigans. So all we're gonna do is go over here and click on create and then choose new agent. And then notice this interface changed, we're not gonna talk about it today. And we're just gonna jump straight to create. All right, you could have used your words to describe it. You could have manually pre-configured it. But if you're just trying to get here as fast as possible, hit that little create button and we're gonna have a blank agent in just a second. All right, now that it's created, right, we've got a blank agent here. So what we're going to do is we'll make ourselves an agent very quickly that has the ability to answer both HR questions and IT questions. Now we could just take this one agent and give it all these different knowledge sources and then go into the instructions and try to configure it to help it really understand like, oh, these instructions only apply to IT requests. These instructions apply to HR and it's possible. It works, right? And I'm going to show you a very complicated one later and how I change it. But in reality, that becomes very difficult when you try to have one agent think about or do two totally different things because it then has to decipher every instruction and where it should call. So what we can do instead of building all of that functionality just in this agent, we can go right here to this agents tab and we're gonna say add an agent. As we go to add an agent, there are three different types of agents you can add. Now, it does matter, it is important you understand the difference. So let's create an agent, this is what we're gonna do first. This one allows you to create an agent that is just a child of this particular agent. So it can't, be used in other scenarios. It's not meant to be standalone by itself. It is basically just an agent that is set up to serve this agent, in our case, agent eight, okay? So that's gonna let us create a child agent, a mini agent within this agent. On the other hand, we can pull in existing agents. So for example, I've already have an agent that knows how to do a whole bunch of functionality around our IT systems, right? It's a standalone agent, it runs, you can interact with it uh, directly, but I'm going to let this agent, Agent 8, <laughs> I'm terrible at names, uh, go ahead and call that agent for all those IT related questions. So it can call other big boy agents as I like to think of them. Also over here, we have Fabric agents. So I've never built a Fabric agent, but if you're using Microsoft Fabric, maybe you've built a data agent before, right? A way to have conversations with the data that is in your Fabric. Um, we're not gonna try to do that today. That's outside my skill set, but you can pull those in. So let's first start with trying to answer those HR related questions and we're gonna create a child agent for that. So we'll go up here and say, create an agent. And so after a few seconds, you're gonna notice here, we're still in agent eight, right? But it's basically saying, hey, okay, I need to know what this agent does. And so this is the child. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this one the human resources answer bot, I don't know. All right, when will this agent be used? So either the agent chooses based on a description or there's a whole bunch of other options. We are not going to attempt to cover all this today, but these are those things that like when I'm teaching my training classes, I always remind people like, go and read all of these and just think about them, right? Plant little seeds in your head. So later on, if you're like, hmm, wouldn't it be really cool if the user was inactive for a while that I invoked this, an agent? Then we can see that those type of things are triggers. But typically speaking, we're gonna just be like, hey, the agent chooses based on the description. Now, if you haven't heard me say it before, I'm going to remind you again. So pay attention, right? Well, focus on screen, all right? Descriptions. Copilot Studio descriptions matter so much. My entire IT career, which is close to 30 years now, I have skipped over description fields, right? Did you know every SharePoint column has a description field? Yeah, you've never filled it out. I've never filled it out. It's okay. Copilot Studio, we have got to use description fields and do a good job with them every single time because this is how the agent's going to decide how do I or when do I use this particular agent? So we've got to give it a good description. So let's try something like, the agent answers all human resource related questions. It can answer questions pertaining to the employee handbook, our policies and procedures, and also take actions like submitting time off requests or pulling a vacation balance, right? We wanna paint a picture of what this agent can do for agent eight. And this is one of those places that if you struggle, you're like, hey, sometimes when people ask questions about, you know, uh, PTO, 
it doesn't come back, right? So we could come back in here and we would incorporate PTO into the description or it doesn't understand our sick wave. I don't know. This is where you will often do a lot of your tuning if you're finding the agent's not getting called is it's this description. Now we're not gonna make our agent do all these things, but I want you to kind of get the idea. Okay, so now we've got all that. As we go by, we'll expand additional details, right? So you can see that there's some other things in here we can do around the priority, uh, build up conditions. Right, we're not gonna do all of that right now, but it just it's good to kind of see these things right here. So when you start to grow later, you get ideas of things to go learn more about, okay? So then now this is a lot like building an agent, right? It's like, hey, what are my instructions? What are my knowledge? Do I have any tools? And so for example, we'll go here to add knowledge and we have a SharePoint site that has all of our HR documentation. So we'll say browse items. Let's see if the browse finds it. If not, we'll just go to it directly. But right over here on the left, we'll BH. This is our uh, box checked HR site. And so there's all of our documents. So just like building a normal agent, I could select one, I could select a few. I'm just gonna say, hey, take the whole thing, right? But so you go. So now it has that. You'd wanna go here and do a good job with your name, name again. How about human resource policy and related documents? So. Nothing too elaborate there, but once again, that A, that name helps you find it later. B, it helps the agent find it later. Same thing, I'm gonna go here to the description and say something like, how about this knowledge source provides information, scrolling's hard, from our SharePoint site. And the reason I always leave our SharePoint site in there is because somebody might say, put SharePoint in there. They know the HR documents are in SharePoint, so they might be like, you know, in SharePoint, does it say how many days off I can have or something, right? So we're giving it more information, more context, so it does a better job of knowing when you call this. For our SharePoint site, for answering questions about HR policies and procedures, okay? And so, once again, description, name, very similar. Description is just a chance to be a little bit more verbose. And, you know, but if they feel a little redundant, that's okay. We want it to be able to find this easily. So, let's say add agent. Now, we could go down here, we could add more knowledge, we could add tools. So like up here, I said, you know, also like an action like submitting a time off request. So if I say add a tool, this would take us to that same tool building interface that you've used with agents. So we're not gonna cover that today. Um, I've got other videos on that, but if you need to learn more about that, then go learn there, but just know that you can add tools in here so it could use the tools. Also for my instructions, we're just gonna make these really simple as something like, Use a knowledge source to answer HR and HR related questions about companies, policies, and procedures. Once again, I could tune this, I could do better, but we just need this to be good enough to work for us now, right? So that looks like it's enough for me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say save. So remember, human resource answer bot is not a big boy agent, right? It can't be called outside, it can't be called directly, it's just a child of agent eight. If we look at agent eight though, you know, basically we have nothing going on right now. That's all right, it probably should work. Let's just test it. What's the worst it gonna do, not work? So with the little refresh icon over here, you always wanna refresh your old test window so that there's no polluted prior stuff in there. And then we'll just go in here and ask it, can I bring my dog to the office? We'll hit enter and look at that after a moment, it came back with all this stuff around, yes, you can bring your dog to the office. Um, and notice it also said, hey, look, you're gonna use the employee handbook, right? So that's where it got the information from. So this is working exactly the way you want. But remember, Agent 8 doesn't know how to do that. Only that little agent knows how to do it. So we've got all the HR capabilities in there. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I wish I knew more about building agents, like you're not going into all the details you want. I know I've done it in other videos, but also keep in mind that I also run uh, about once a quarter a Copilot Studio Jumpstart class. The next one is actually next week. So come join me for a live all day class where we learn how to build uh, autonomous agents, we learn to build conversational agents, we learn about this agent to agent calling, Power FX, Power Automate, how they all plug in to really try to empower you to build one of these all in one fast day of just boom, as much information as you can handle. All right, back to the video. Okay, so now we're like, hey, I want this agent to do more, right? What we do, we can just go here to agents and then we would be able to come in here and edit the agent by clicking here and then start to you know refine it, add more functionality, do all the things that you wanna do. But Shane, you said you'd also do IT related questions, okay? So if we say add an agent, so I already have an IT related agent, right? I built a full agent, it has tools, it has knowledge, it does OData, SharePoint, it's a very complicated but amazing agent. So I can just go straight here to Copilot Studio and there is my IT support assistant agent. So we choose that. So this is saying, hey, I'm just going to use that. So here's a description, 
This description is the description that I wrote originally over there. So let's see, an IT help desk agent that supports users questions, escalates, blah, blah, blah. So I did a good job of writing the description that day. Good job, Shane, good job. So since I did, I'm just going to let that one roll. And so it's like, hey, good. But if I needed to change this, maybe I'm using somebody else's agent and they didn't do a good job of describing their own, it happens. You know, you can change this as you need, but we're gonna leave everything alone and we're just going to say, add an agent. So notice here on the list of agents, this one's a child, this one's a connected agent. But now that all of that's in here, we'll go back over here to overview. I don't know why I went back to overview, I didn't need to, right? We'll refresh this and let's try something like, um, I want to be an admin on my computer, right? Obviously agent eight doesn't know anything about that. Let's see if it can figure out that it needs to call that other agent into the conversation. Look at that. It's like, hey, IT support agent has been triggered. And then it's going to hit the topic that's inside that agent called get admin agent, right? Because there's no topics here. And then it's like, what do you want it for? I want it to install software. All right, looks like it wants me to connect. So let's connect in, right? Do my whole little authentication dance. So we'll just say manage connections. And now it's done, we'll say submit, right? This is how you know there's no shenanigans. I didn't, you know, make all this magically work. You're going to trip over this. So I left it in here, so I would trip over it. So you'd have to see that, yes, even Shane has to authenticate, right? So there you go, you've connected. So then now we'll go back, we'll say retry. And the reason it needed a data connection was that this topic called a SharePoint get items action to find all the list of software and then dynamically used a PowerFX function or formula to uh, create a adaptive card with this lovely little logo and the dynamic list. And if we say, yes, I wanna open up a ticket, that will call another action within that same agent and then it says, you know, give me a summary. And so we'll say um, to install things. And I think it's gonna ask me for a full one. Would you like to include with your support ticket? I needed this yesterday. Hurry up, please. All right. I worked in IT for a long time. Those are the type of messages you get. There you go. And right, it, whatever, we're gonna quit answering the questions. But that is that other agent running, right? If we were to go over here to Copilot Studio, go here to agents. And so there's a demo IT support agent. And then like, if we were to look, you know, we said the topics. And so there was the get admin access. And so then this is the whole maze of stuff that it's going down right, right now, right? So like we saw the adaptive card and then it's currently trying to create the item support. So it's calling multiple actions using variables, all those fun things, right? Like the demo IT support assistant is not a simple agent. It's a very complicated agent, but agent eight is successfully calling it. Now, speaking of Agent 8 being able to call Demo IT Support Assistant, what you need to look at is under Settings, there's a setting here for let other agents connect it to and use this one. So you want to make sure that this is on. Um, so far, I've seen that all legacy agents that were created before the agent agent calling things seem to just work. But if you're having a hard time, it's not showing up in that list of agents for you to pick from when we added, then make sure that this is on Save and Publish. Not publishing your other agent would be another reason you couldn't call it, okay? But there you go. So we have successfully added both a child agent and a complete, what I called earlier, I had a fancy name, big daddy agent or big boy agent, I don't know, whatever it was, right? That big old full agent, uh, we were able to call that as well. And so we do all of that from this agents to agents. The last thing I wanna do is show you an example of where I'm, I haven't done it yet, but I'm looking to put this in. So if we go back over here to the list of agents, and then we go down here, I have this agent that I do my whole incident triage for. All right, incident response agent. And I'll leave you a link up there to the whole thing that explains this incident response agent, but it is an autonomous agent that is called when someone fills out an incident report in Power Apps, it gets saved Dataverse. This agent uh, looks at all the data, analyzes all the pieces, and then goes and you know submits the report and categorizes it and escalates it to the right people based on whether it's a little ouchy because you scratch your finger or if it's you know you total a car right different uh, different responses required for each. Anyway, so as part of writing this one right, you can see that it has seven, eight, nine, nine different distinct activities it did. I wrote this one back in the spring. I'm not going to lie to you. It took me about a month to get all of this to work perfectly and consistently. And the reason for that is because while there's nine different activities here, you know, they, they kind of say the same word, right? Like sometimes I was like looking for the witness description. Sometimes I was looking for the 
photo description, and they would get confused when I'd be like, hey, get me the description, and it would just guess and pick one, right? So I had having to refine my language so that everything was related, but unique enough that the agent never got called incorrectly, right? And it took me about a month of do, 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 to figure it out, okay? This is a prime example of where agent-to-agent -agent calling is, should be, right? So instead of having seven, nine, whatever this is, detailed instructions that may or may not confuse the agent, may or may not get called in order, may or may not work, <laughs> I need to rebuild this one as nine different child agents. So then the idea would be is the instructions would just be like, hey, call this agent to do this step, you know, this agent to do this step, right? It would just lay those out. But when it was in the child agent, if any of the instructions for that child agent were similar or overlapping with instructions that were in one of the other child agents, it wouldn't get confused because while the child agent's running, it's just looking at what goes on in the child agent. So it'd be a way for me to compartmentalize all the confusion. So it's just simply call this, call this, call this, call this. And then each one of those has their complex stories inside of them, right? I, it literally would have saved me like a month of my life if agent to agent calling had existed when I built this one. So, but it's okay. I learned a lot, a lot, the days that I got to do this one, but I'm really excited for how agent calling is really going to empower us. Right? And there's a lot more in the future for agent calling, but today that's what I would do. If you've got agents with a lot of complexity, pull it out and then, you know, get in there. So thoughts, questions, comments, leave them below, right? Go sign up for my Copilot Studio Jumpstart class, whether it's next week or one in the future, right? We're always one of those because people really enjoy learning about this stuff. This is the future. This is the now. You've got to do it. Or if you just want us to help you with it, check out our brand new website, copilot911.com. That's right. We've gotten so much demand for all this Copilot and Copilot Studio stuff that we've spun off its own website. So there you can find all of our consulting services around building agents or building, you know, Copilot chats, training. We've had a lot of training demand or mentoring you through it, helping you architect it or just plan for the future. Also, we can do the whole Azure AI Foundry and those pieces. Or if you want the more traditional Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, we're still over at powerapps911.com. That's right. We got two websites now. We're so cool. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.